Hi, I'm Mark Mancini with VRB Outstanding and Vacation Home Mastery. And this week, we're going to talk about Airbnb filters, how to get you seen in more searches, and get more bookings. So stay tuned. And welcome back. Now, I'm outside because it's mid-March. It's like 70 degrees here in North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So I apologize, my transition lens kicked in. I don't mean to be wearing my sunglasses on video, but that's what happens. I'm outside, it's a gorgeous day. So hopefully you'll enjoy the beautiful surroundings. Hopefully catch some boats going by like they were before. Now, before we go into the search feature, what I wanna segue into is our Vacation Home Mastery course which is guaranteed to get you more bookings for $197, which is less than a night's stay in many of your places. We're gonna show you things that will feed on top of what we're gonna go into with this search filter feature. Because this week we're doing Airbnb and the next video will be VRBO. And we're gonna show you the key things to get you seen in more places, okay? Now I wanna make sure that you know that this Vacation Home Mastery, we've been selling dozens of them in the past two months. Our clients have reached back out to us and said, Mark, we're getting bookings from this. We've only implemented two or three things and we've gotten bookings. Wait till we implement seven or eight of them. How many more are we gonna get? A lot more, trust me. I've been doing this over 12 years, guys. I know what I'm doing. A lot of these new folks uh, doing these courses and having these get togethers in different places on the West Coast, they've only been doing it three or four years. Sure, they're doing lots of them, but how profitable are they and how full are their books, okay? Mine are full year round, all right? So let's talk about um, the very first thing on Airbnb. So when you go to their page, and hopefully you've used them as a guest, okay? You've gone there and you put in the location, you put in the, the place you wanna go to, and then dates. Now, if you've got a, a trip that's, you can go anytime in July or June, you might leave it open, but many people have a certain week that they wanna go in, so they will put those exact weeks in, then they're gonna put the number of guests, and maybe if they have a pet, they're selecting a pet as well. Now they'll search and it'll come up and there'll be several hundred homes. They can't go through all of them, they're too, you know what, that's okay. They've got certain criteria and they're using filters. And this is why you need to make sure your, your uh, description and your, uh, your listing is as exact and accurate as possible without over embellishing it. So we're gonna first start off with page one of that filter, because they're gonna select the filter, okay? And here's what they're gonna do. So I'm gonna move over to the side here and bring this up here along here. Now, there are people that want to book an entire place for themselves. That's my wife and I, when we travel, we want our own place. We don't want to share anything. Now in January, I went to Key West by myself, part business, part pleasure. And I rented a room in a house. I didn't mind because prices in Key West, literally obscene, okay? So there are people that will choose any type or they'll specify a room or entire home. So it's important to discern that. Next is your price range. And here's where we're gonna talk about Bob Barker. And we're gonna, we're gonna remember that game show was that the price is right, right? So you wanna get as close to the price without going over it. So if you're 810 a night, bring it down to 795. Even if you're 800, bring it down to 795. If you're 925 a night, you may want to consider 895 increasing your cleaning fee, okay? Something to keep that price under that zero, zero mark. Ah, bell just went off. People will search less than 500, less than 700, less than 300. So 325, lower to 295, jack up your, uh, uh, your cleaning fee an extra 100, 200 bucks, and that's how you get around it. And that's mm -hmm. will get you seen in more searches. Oh, that little thing just paid off right there. Now, underneath that is your beds and rooms. This should be as accurate as possible. Some of you have two beds in the room, that's fine. Just make sure you discern that here and it's represented fairly and accurately, okay? So that is page one. Let's go into page two. Now page two has some things in here you can control and some things you can't control like guest favorites. Now guest favorites is when your guest will favorite your property. I know what you're thinking. Stop. 
Don't call up 20 of your friends and say, oh, can you all favor my, my, my Airbnb listing? Okay, th this is a algorithm thing that looks, you can't just have people favorite it and expect it to stay there. It has to be they favorite it, they don't favorite it, someone new, new favorites it, someone new unfavorites it. And it has to be kind of like a flowing thing. Now, if you've got 20 friends who've got Airbnb listings, you kind of do like, all right, you favorite these five this week. You favor these, favor these five the next week. Favor these five the next week. These five the next one. Then take them all out, wait a couple days, and do it again. You kind of have to let it ebb and flow, so to speak, okay? You can't just favor it and it stays there. One of my homes is a guest favorite. One is not. The one that is not does not do a lot of Airbnb bookings, probably one or two a year. It's almost entirely direct. The other one does several bookings through Airbnb a year, so that's why it's a guest favorite. Now, the Lux is something Airbnb really doesn't do anymore. That's for high-end homes. And I don't care how high-end your home is. You can't just call them up or try to reach out to them and apply for it. They're not taking new homes. So ignore that, all right? There's a couple that are grandfathered in, and honestly, uh, they don't get a whole lot of business. The Airbnb clientele is not the same as the VRBO clientele, okay? Yes, I said it. Next is property type. Please be accurate with this. If I'm traveling with my dogs because 53% of people travel with their dogs. I want a home. I want to be able to go to a backyard and let the dogs go to the bathroom out there. In an apartment, I don't want to go down an elevator with my dogs. All right. A guest house, make sure you let them know because some people will have an issue staying that close to the owner of the home. All right. And then a hotel, hopefully none of you are hotel owners. It sucks that they're here, but there's nothing we can do about it because Brian wants his money. Next are amenities. Now we're gonna to go to the low hanging fruit first. God, I hope you have air conditioning in your home. If not, get a split AC unit, they're cheap, install it, have AC. A kitchen, try to have a kitchen. If, if it's a small studio or something, try to have some kind of kitchenette with some of the basic things like coffee maker, um, a small refrigerator, um, microwave oven, okay? That's, that may be enough. A blender or a toaster, you know? Some of these toasters that they have are kind of like ovens kind of like an air fryer type thing too. Uh, Wi-Fi, how do you not have Wi-Fi in your home already, okay? So yes, that, that should be a given. Free parking, I hope you have free parking. Some of those urban short-term rentals, they have to pay to park in the street, I get that, but hopefully you've got some free parking. If you've got a pool, great, because guess what? There are guests that will check this box. They gotta have a pool on vacation. It's so important. This is what narrows down your list, okay? Makes it easier for people. So that is why I tell people, even if you're right next to the ocean, have a pool. It's so important, okay, if you've got the ability to do so. Beachfront. I have a small issue with this, and the reason being because my idea of beachfront is a sandy beach you can walk into the ocean. But some people, especially in the Keys, it's sand, and they have what's called riprap. That is these rocks, okay? And you have to climb down two to four feet of rocks to go into the ocean. To me, that's not really oceanfront. I, visually, it is, but it's not really, you can walk in there. I mean, it's it's not beachfront. It's oceanfront, but it's not beachfront. But the Airbnb police don't care, okay? Beachfront to them, oh, well, you got sand, you're by the water. Okay, it works. I don't believe in that, but nothing I can do. Next, okay, essentials. Now, uh, what I want to know is uh, many of these are things you should have. Many, I said. Washer and dryer. If you're doing stays of a week or more, you really need to have a washer and dryer, especially if you're doing two-week stays. You know, many of us have vacation homes that we do two-week stays at. you got to have a washer and dryer, even if it gets a small one that uses like 110 and it's a small, it only washes, I don't know, three shirts and two pairs of pants, something, okay? People need to do laundry. Uh, next is, um, I want to talk to you about TVs. We had a video on TVs. I think you should have a TV in every single bedroom and every single living room. Otherwise, you're risking a five-star review. At least have one. You know, if there's no TVs in your home, you're in trouble, okay? Um, heating. Geez, you know, I hope you have heat. Even in the Keys, there has been sometimes it's gotten cold, and we've had guests use the heat, okay? It happens. Um, hair dryer. If you get a regular hair dryer and you put it in your drawer in your bathroom, it's either going to last two weeks or two months, okay? And that's it. 
Amazon from our VRB Outstanding course. I'll put the link over here. Go out and get one for each bathroom. It mounts to your wall. It looks good. It works good. It lasts forever. I've had them for 10 years. You mount to the wall. People can't steal them. They're great. Okay, just go get one of those. Okay, because you guys have gotten those $10 ones and they walk away and two months later buying another $10. Just spend 30 bucks or whatever it is. Get it. Be done with it. Dedicated workspace. In my VRP Outstanding course, we talk about the brother all-in-one units. They do printing, scanning, and copying. We leave them there with a USB cable for guests. So they can just plug their computers in. If they need to scan something, if they need to print something, it's right there. If they want to copy something, they can. And it's people have used it a lot. At the Oasis, we actually have a workstation. We've got a computer and the all-in-one unit because there's been uh, times where people have needed to print out marriage licenses because we do weddings there. But uh, if you have the dedicated workspace, that's great. You don't have to make one. But if you've got a spare desk somewhere, uh, it definitely comes in handy to make it um, uh, another checkbox, right? Because people will search for a place where they can work because they don't want to work lying in bed or on the couch. So that checkbox for the cost of a desk will get you solved. You have that all-in-one brother printer scanner copier which is about 200 bucks so all in maybe you're at 300 bucks for this whole thing you checked a box that can be seen in more search engines okay and if search appearances so that's what's important finally an iron now this is gonna sound trivial they're asking for iron not iron and ironing board okay now you should have an ironing board because you don't want people to uh, burn your, your your table if you don't give an ironing board believe it or not Earlier this year, we had a guest. Now, they already had booked, but they asked if we had an iron. Now, in the Keys, guess what? Now, I'm going to move over here because we don't need to look at this anymore. In the Keys, I don't care what restaurant you go to. It could be the, the fanciest restaurant, the most expensive restaurant in the Keys. T-shirt, shorts, and flip-flops, and you're getting in. You're getting seated. No problem, okay? But you still want to look good. Now, if you're like my wife and I, you want to be presentable. You want to be iron. So don't look at an iron as something that, oh, it's just Myrtle Beach or it's just the Keys. You want an iron, okay? People want to look good. We're a little OCD, okay? I'm in a t-shirt, but it looks presentable, right? So when I go out, I, I don't want wrinkled shorts. I don't want wrinkled shirt. I'll iron, okay? People are going to ask for that. So yes, you know what kind of guy I am. If you didn't figure that out yet already, Shame on you. All righty. Next are going to be features. Now, here's what I want to talk about. Some of these things you have no control over. Hot tub. It's great if you can put one in, but they're expensive. Not all places really have the 220 voltage to handle it. I get that. Uh, EV charger. Here we go. I did two episodes on EV chargers. One I did like a year and a half ago, and the other one I did last year. Folks, by 2026, you need to have an EV charger at your home or you're going to risk losing all kinds of bookings because guess what by 2026 there's going to be a ton of evs on the road and from here on out they will all be using the tesla charging system the nax nacs north american charging system okay so just get a tesla charger putting it put it in it may cost between 700 or a thousand dollars it's well worth it you'll be getting the bookings you'll be getting higher end people I've gotten four bookings in the past year because I've had an EV charger at my properties. We get Teslas literally all the time at the Oasis and probably every, um, maybe once every two months at Heart of Murata. Okay, so we get a lot of EV people in South Florida. The next thing I'll talk about briefly is cribs. My homes are not kid friendly. I don't have fences around the pools, but you may have homes that are. My first vacation rental was definitely kid friendly, okay? We did not supply a crib. We told people where they can get a crib nearby to rent or they can bring their pack and play or whatever and use that. The reason why I don't like cribs is because you have to clean them. You have to worry about COVID, people throwing up on them, kids breaking them. So I do recommend if you are kid friendly, get a crib Make sure every week that your cleaners are there cleaning. They check the crib out, make sure it's cleaned, and make sure it works, okay? That checks off this box because if you're traveling with your child, this is an important checkbox, okay? I'll let that go. I don't want the kid because I don't have a fence in my pool. I don't want them to die, okay? So, but for you, I want you to get this booking. King bed. I talked about this. My wife talked about it, actually, in our 
uh, bedroom secrets episode, okay? She talked about the importance of a king bed because one third of your guest time, guess what? It's going to be in bed one third of their time, all right? Eight of that 24 hours, seven days a week in that vacation. So w our last vacation rental came with um, uh, a king bed and two queen beds. We replaced two brand new queen beds and the, the headboard and everything. For two king beds, we got two king Tempur-Pedic adjustable beds and new headboard. It cost us probably $10,000 for everything. Even though those beds were very good, those queen beds, what we wanted king beds. Almost every single review mentions because we get a lot of couples. They travel three couples, okay? And they didn't have to fight for who gets the king bed and who gets the queen, right? All three get king beds. Uh, I know there's some of you out there. There's you, you, yeah, you too, that have three bedrooms, and you've got a king in one of them, and you've got two full beds in another, and you've got a bunk bed in a third. That's fine if you're in an area like uh, maybe Orlando area or places like that, and you're going after the whole family or two families or whatever, because really, I mean, if you're breaking it up like that, it's a large family or extended family, all right? I'm going after couples. And even if the couples are bringing kids, I want king beds. You can put two kids in one king bed. I don't care. Brother and sister, they can sleep in a king bed, okay? And not going to end, you know, be the end of the world, okay? But it's a king bed. I'd rather not have a bunk bed or, or two full beds. If I only have three bedrooms, I want three king beds. I cannot tell you how many people love the fact we have three king beds. But that is a checkbox. Have king beds in your beds. People will look for that. A gym. We talked about it early on with my um, uh, game room episode. Don't have a gym. Now, you may look at me and say, Mark, you probably work out. You're right, okay? But on vacation, I don't work out. I let my body relax and, and let my muscles heal. So many people who, who are, and I'm a professional bodybuilder, I do not Work out on vacation. A gym is not important. People are not checking that box, okay? So don't worry about it. They can go to a local gym if they want to work out. Don't worry about that box. No one's checking that. But the next one, they are. And that's your barbecue and grill. I did an episode on that. Barbecues and grills are, are great. People want to cook their hot dogs, their hamburgers, their steaks on vacation. Especially if you're by the water. Now, you don't know this, but two floors below, we've got an outdoor grill. And we've got seating out there. And I can't tell you how many times in the spring and summer we are out here and, and we're, we're grilling. The boats are going by and having a few drinks. It is great to have a grill outside and have this gorgeous view here. And so do your guests. They want that. Get a barbecue and grill. Watch that episode and make sure that you have them there, especially supply them enough propane and keep the propane filled so they're not having to go out and supply their own. Next is breakfast. Who, who serves breakfast except a bed and breakfast? So don't worry about that one. Indoor fireplace, yes. If your vacation rental is um, uh, by a ski resort, yes, it's probably important. By the water, coastal community, mm, no one's checking that box. The next one, smoking allowed. Even if you allow smoking outside, I would suggest not checking this box because they'll think smoking inside is okay too because they're not going to be real specific with reading everything. So... You shouldn't have smoking in your property anyway, and I would not check this box. Next one is the waterfront. Your waterfront, your lakefront, yes, check that box, very important. Safety, smoke alarm, gotta have it, it's a requirement, it's, it's insurance, it's liability, gotta have it. Carbon monoxide, you only need that if you need it. Okay, we had an episode on that. And the important thing is, as many coastal areas, it isn't a requirement because it doesn't meet the criteria. We're not going to go into it here. We've got a video on smoke alarms, and you can watch that. Uh, I hate that it's a checkbox, but I really don't think anyone's checking it, okay? Not really important. Um, next, what I think is the most important. Um, so I'm just going to have you look at that instant book. Some of you are scared to check that, right? But guests are looking for it. Guests want instant book. Guests, guests want to be able to, boom, one click checkout. They want to buy it right there. All right. I cannot stress the importance of doing instant book. And in my course, Vacation Home Mastery, I will show you how we do instant booking safely. I don't care if they've got no reviews. I don't care if, 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 if they've got no reviews and no profile picture. I'll host them. 
because I'm going to get the signed rental agreement. I'm going to get a deposit. I'm going to show you how to do that too. And we book and we don't worry about things because our guests behave. We've got their money. We've got their credit card on file and we've got a signed rental agreement. Boom. We're good to go. So instant book is something guests will look for. I'm telling you they will. Self-check-in, that should be a no-brainer. No one wants to meet the host. They just want to check in with the keyless entry. It's a no-brainer there too. Allows pets. You'll be seen in 53% more videos if you choose allows pets. Because guess what? Um, pets are family. And we go into this in our Vacation uh, Home Mastery course. I'm going to show you the little tricks and secrets I have with hosting pets. We did a video on, on dogs, okay? Because we host dogs, not pets. Now, we go into more on how to attract them and, and, and get your house to the next level. But we're going to save that for that, for that courseware that you guys are going to be signing up for shortly. I know you are. Finally is the last page of filters, which is the least important, okay? I'm going to go first to the easy, low-hanging fruit, host language. For most of you, this is just English or Canadian friends. Okay, they may have French or Italian. I get that. Sure, that's important, all right? Accessibility features. And you can read these, right? The step up uh, for the get main entrance, uh, entrance uh, wider than 32 inches. That's because of wheelchairs. Um, free path to guest en entrance, parking so they can get out with their uh, handicapped uh, stuff. Look, I'm going to cut to the chase real quick on this. Unless your home is specifically made handicap accessible, do not check any of these boxes. I cannot be any more clear. If someone is in a wheelchair, okay, and they book your house because you checked one of these because you thought maybe, you know, oh, it can kind of, kind of work, and they get there and they can't get in, now they have no place to stay. And you know how hard it is to find a place to stay for someone in a wheelchair? Don't do this to people. Please show empathy. Unless your house literally was made ADA accessible, do not check any of these, okay? Do not oversell something that is just simply not what it is, all right? I had someone inquire to have a, a wedding at the Oasis. And I said, we've had people with wheelchairs on the sand. That's not a problem. But the homes are going to be the issue because the, it was actually the groom that was in a wheelchair. Our main house has stairs and no elevator. He can't go up there. Our guest house has a step up. Our bathroom is tight. It doesn't have 36 inch door. I said, you know what? This isn't going to be the house for you unless you stay elsewhere. And I know you probably want to stay on property. Okay. So just say, say it like it is. All right. And that's where I'm just going to leave it right there. If you take some of these tips, the ones that were important and you focus on them and you go ahead and you have an iron, you get king beds. You, you make sure you design your place properly. You put in a kitchenette if you don't have one there, okay? It's some of the basic uh, uh, things, appliances and so forth. Try to do the best you can. You'll get seen in more searches because people are going to filter and narrow it down. And then they're going to look and they're going to see that money shot photograph, okay? Now, I hope this episode was really good. Our next episode is going to be in the same thing of uh, filters, but it's going to be for VRBO. All right, but vacation rentals by owner. So they've got some different filters and different features. So we're gonna go into, into those. What I want you to do though, don't forget to check out my course. I'm telling you, you'll like it, you love it. And if you don't, you get your $197 back. Remember, hit like and subscribe below, put in some comments, questions, whatever you got, and I'll see you next time on VRB Outstanding and Vacation Home Mastery.